Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a Euro game. So we're finally back in my own wheelhouse here, uh, and this was one that was suggested to me several times uh, before I even had a chance to look at it. I finally got my hands on it, uh, and I'm glad that I did. And we're going to take a look at Rockwell. Uh, I'm going to apologize already because I can't pronounce the designer's name, but his name is Bruno. Uh, and this was made by Sit Down Games. Uh, now this is a Euro in which you're going to be operating a mining company, working on mining out different parts of the same area. Each player is going to be controlling some of his workers that he's going to send further into the mine. Uh, he's going to be controlling a couple of VPs, vice presidents, that he's going to be placing out on actions in order to try and further his abilities to mine stuff out. Uh, you can build elevators and do all kinds of crazy stuff, all on this cool circular board that you'll see shortly. So um, it's going to be a, a weird game that has a different dynamic. I can't really compare it to anything else, but real quick, why don't we just take a look inside of this box. We'll see what the components look like, how the game plays, and then we'll come back here at the end and we'll get my opinion on Rockwell. So here you can see the drilling board of Rockwell. There's far too much to show you in this game on just one shot. So I'm going to show you where a lot of the action takes place, where you're going to be moving around your workers, your miners, in order to be drilling out these different portions of the mine in the hopes of collecting different cubes, which you can then use to achieve victory conditions. Uh, now the movement of these is going to be uh, taking place over several rounds, each or each several phases each round. There's going to be four movement rounds on each of the rounds of the game. Uh, so you'll be moving these guys around, trying to get them onto these different segments of this wheel here. Now you can see that these come out, uh, and they're actually arranged 9, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10 in the center, then 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8 on the next ring out, 5, 6, 5, 6 in the next one, and 4, 3, 4, 3 on the outside one. These numbers on these different tiles are the values that you need to have in the number of workers or the number of supervisors that go with workers uh, in order to mine those areas out. And you'll see that each player has some disks out here that have a one value on them. Each player will have one at each of the entrances to the mine right now. The value of these workers, plus if they get some of these dice to add to them, the value of these dice are going to dictate uh, the values that are present at each of these different areas. And you'll be moving your workers around, trying to get them into different segments of the mine. When the value of workers plus supervisors, supervisors exceeds the value of the mine, so if we got these three workers, or meets or exceeds the value of the mine, we got these three workers on this tile, this tile would resolve and flip over. And what's going to happen when it flips over uh, is that one, you'll see that there's an income visible on this tile. In this case, it is two brown cubes. You can see it here, two brown cubes. Those cubes are a resource that can be uh, obtained by someone who builds a mine shaft or an elevator there, and that person would continually get those cubes. Now, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, they're going to have to build their mine there when they're the only player on that tile, uh, and usually before it's excavated, although throughout the game there are rules you can use that will let you build on an already excavated tile. On top of this, when you mine one of these areas, there's going to be some cubes distributed immediately, and you'll see that we have different decks of cards for the different levels of the different mine areas. We have threes, fours, fives, all the way up through tens, which happen to be in this inner circle. The better the area, the more likely you are to get more cubes. But when players excavate one of these areas, you're going to flip over a card from the appropriate deck. And it'll say on here a number of cubes. You'll see in this case it's six blue, three brown, and one of the kind of grayish silver cubes. Now, what happens here is that you're going to split these cubes as evenly as possible amongst the players that are there. So in this case, there are three players. That means each player would get two blue cubes, they would get one brown cube, and then the gray cube is left over because that cube can't be split evenly. This cube is going to go to the player who has priority there, and this is going to go in several ways. First, if somebody has built one of their mines there, these mines can be built throughout the game, that player will always have priority on this area and will always get all of the leftover cubes that can't be divided evenly. If there's nobody with a mine there, it's going to go to the player that has the highest power on that tile. So for example, if this player had upgraded their worker to level two, this player would get two blue, one brown, and they would get the leftover gray slash silver cube. So having priority will get you extra leftover cubes that you don't have to split with the other players. Finally, if nobody has the highest, it's going to get done by the player who triggered the action to happen. So whoever either moved in there or forced someone else to move in there is going to get the extra cube. This division would work differently if there were only two players. In this case, each player would get three blue, each player would get one brown, and the, the extra brown and the extra gray would be left over, and those would be given to the player who has priority. 
As you go further down, we'll take a look at a level nine, you'll see that you're going to encounter different types of cubes and also some various other things. This one is four blue, three of the grayish, and seven gold. And those gold would get divvied up just like anything else. Uh, but at the bottom, we'll see we have a hazard here. When these hazards happen, each player that's not well protected, and we'll cover protection later, but each player that's not well protected is going to have to discard their three most valuable cubes that they would obtain from that mining. So if you're not protected and you were supposed to get three gold, you'll lose all of those gold. You can protect some of these by discarding markers that you'll get throughout the game, or by having built-in protections that you can pay for, but basically you're going to be trying to not lose those cubes or hopefully mitigate some of that loss. So throughout the game during movement rounds, you're going to move moving, moving yourself around, moving your different guys from one area to the other, hopefully kind of triggering some of these minings on this board and getting most of the benefit, uh, or at least more than the other players, and hopefully having them trigger some where you'll gain something as well. Uh, eventually you'll want to move into the center of the earth, which is one of the end game triggers, uh, and moving in there will help you trigger the end of the game, and hopefully when you do so, you'll have the most points. Now that we've taken a look at this board, let's take a look at how some of the other phases of the game are going to work. Here you can see where the rest of the action of Rockwell will take place. So anything that's basically not moving or resolving the mining uh, out on that mining board is going to take place on these boards here. The first part that you'll take part in in every round of Rockwell, which goes for an indeterminate number of rounds, is an auction. There will always be an auction first. Now these boards actually vary dependent on the number of players. They'll flip over uh, if you have four players. Um, the same is true for the player board, but basically the game mechanics are the same. There just may be some different availability in spots. But the first thing that's always going to happen is an auction. This auction can either use cash or cubes or both. And each player will start the game with some cash and they'll also start the game with some cubes. And these cubes have relative value. I believe they're zinc, copper, silver, and gold. Um, they're worth 400, 600, 800, and a thousand dollars a piece. So you'll see you'll start with some of these cubes that you can use in this auction. This auction is going to be for turn order. Uh, basically this first turn or order up here, which is going to be for placing your vice presidents, which will give you bonuses to your actions as well as some various things you can do on the turn. So you're going to bet some money, amount of money in your hand and open it up and whoever has the highest bid will go first, whoever has the lowest bid will go last, and if there's ties they'll stay in the same order but adjust appropriately. Once you've done this you're going to go into the VP placement phase. Each player has two of their VPs and they can place them on any of these three boards on the spots available. You'll see there's four here, two here, and four on this last board. This placement phase will only allow you to place one VP per board, so you'll see you'll always be on two different boards, uh, and you will always be on, you know, not on all three, so you're going to have to choose which of these two different areas you'd like to function in for this round. This first board is going to help you determine turn order for later phases of the game, including movement uh, and, and kind of resolution of that mining board area. In addition, you can either place on one, two, three, or four on this board, and whichever one you place on will give you a different benefit. Placing on one or two will give you a bribe token. Uh, you'll note there's only two bribe tokens available, and that's because there's only two spaces that give you a bribe token. These tokens can be used in any of the future movement phase as phases out on that mining board in order to force somebody who's adjacent to you to move to where you're at. So you're allowed to move somebody to follow you, which may trigger the mining of one of those areas and hopefully, hopefully help you get some cubes out of mining that different uh, layer of the mine. So you can pick one of those up and of course try and go earlier in turn order. Alternatively, you can place on the other side and that's going to give you one of these supervisors. These supervisors can be paid, uh, starting at $1,000, to add to the value of one of your workers. You'll see that they are four-sided dice, so they have one, twos, threes, and fours. Uh, and they're going to start off $1,000 for the lowest level, and up to uh, $2,500, I believe it is, $1,500, $2,500 to make your worker plus four. However, when you're placing these, if you want to place them, you can only use the same value as the level of the, the mine that you're currently on. So if you're in that first level, they can only be a level one supervisor, second level two, and up to four if you're towards the center of the mine. So this is going to help you power up your workers and contribute more to excavating those different mine levels and hopefully get you the bonus of being the uh, kind of priority person in that area to get the bonus cubes. So depending on where you place here, you may go earlier or later in the turn order. You can also place your workers down here, which which is the market, and this will allow you to make a certain number of sales when you get to resolution of actions. You'll see you get one, two, three, four actions on this first spot, only three on the second. And this will allow you to make or, or make sales or buy things from this market. And this is always going to be at the value here. So you can get rid of zinc or buy zinc for 400. Same for copper, 600, silver, 800, and gold, 1,000. Uh, now you can only make one transaction per type of each of these, so you can't both buy and sell zinc, but you wouldn't want to because the price never changes. 
If you place on this last board, you're going to get to take actions that are going to help you improve yourself in the game. There are several different actions you can take, and they're all right here, as well as some victory point tiles you can earn at the top here. When you do these, you're going to either uh, upgrade the abilities of your workers. You're going to see that your workers, as I showed you earlier, all start out at value one. Uh, they look like this, but you may flip them over for $2,000 to side two. Or to go from two to three, it's going to cost you $3,500. You'll see you have threes that you may replace on the board when you go past two. Or you may spend $5,000 to make a three into a four. And this is just going to make your workers better to help excavate and hopefully get you priority over different areas, as well as mine deeper into the mine. You can build your elevators. These elevators I talked about earlier are going to help you get income each round. The levels of the mine, once flipped over, have an income printed on them, and if your elevator is there, you'll get that income at the end of all of the movement phases each round. So these will be good to have out on the board. And the more of them you build, the uh, more expensive they get, but they can be built more freely. Your first one must be built on an unflipped area where only you are present. Later, they can be built on flipped areas. And finally, they can be built on any area of the board, uh, no matter what. So if you build all of them, it's a little bit easier easier to build them. This next area is going to help keep you safe from those hazards that I showed you, and you can actually build hazard protection in uh, by spending first 2000 then 3000 and then $4,000, you're going to protect cubes, one, three, uh, or all of your cubes when you go to protect them. So uh, you can build in that protection and it'll help you kind of stay safe as you go down to the mine. You may not have to worry about getting more protection in different ways. Finally, you can upgrade the movement of your workers. Originally, your workers can only move one in any direction, but later in the game, you can upgrade them to move two to the left or two to the right and one forward or backwards. You can have them straddle two different spaces and count as being in both, but when they get resolved, to move to one of the two, or as the last movement upgrade, move two in any direction or one in one in another direction. So you can use those upgrades, or you can trade in cubes that you've acquired throughout the game to get victory points. These start off at a better trade-in ratio, two cubes for one victory point, two for one, two for two, and two for two, and throughout the game will get worse. Seven for two victory points, or for example, seven here. As you go down here, eight for three, whatever the case may be, it's going to get harder and harder to trade these cubes in for VP. So as I said, players will take their turns placing their workers. Maybe this player places here and here, uh, and we have other players that place up here and down here, uh, and our third player decides that he's going to place here and here. Once we're done with this, we're going to resolve these boards, one, two, three, and the first thing that's gonna happen is each player has the opportunity to trade in cubes they have, one for one, for these little protection markers that will protect one of their cubes when a disaster happens. So if you have some of these when a disaster happens, you can turn them in to, tra to protect your cubes. Oftentimes you'll trade in zinc to protect gold cubes that you might get later. After we've done this, we're going to go through four individual movement rounds where each player will have the opportunity to move one of their miners on that board I showed you earlier, hopefully triggering some mining and getting some cubes. And then the elevators that are built are going to pay off with their round payoff for income for players that have built their mines there, or built their elevators there. After that, you're going to move on to the second board and players can make their transactions that we talked about, buying or selling cubes in order to get money uh, or in order to get cubes that they can trade in for victory points down here or hopefully change some of the end game conditions that are over on this side right here, which we haven't talked about yet. Then you're going to go down here and each player will take their requisite number of actions one at a time uh, available from the actions that are down here. Players will keep taking rounds like this until a player ac accomplishes either one of two things. Either the majority of the players move into the center of the earth that we talked about earlier, which will trigger the end of the game, or there are achievements that can be obtained through the game when you simply reach a certain level of something. So for example, if you have two workers of value four, or when you move into the center of the earth, you can get these tiles, which are worth the victory points printed on them. For example, getting two workers of value four first is worth six, whereas getting it second is worth five. There's a third one of these silver or goldish colored ones, which are the uh, required end game ones. If you get all three of these, plus uh, several of the other ones, you can trigger the end of the game. Uh, and the last one is get six of each type of cube and have those available. You don't have to turn them in, but they'll get you the victory points. There are other non end game condition ones that are kind of in a wood color, uh, which are get four of your guys to the third level. Uh, obtain six cards, and these cards as you mine through uh, the player 
uh, that it triggered the mining is going to get to keep these cards. So once you get six of them, you'll get some victory points uh, and have a condition of victory. Uh, you're going to have 10 of the gray cubes, 12 of the gold cubes, or three level two workers. And in order to end, trigger the end of the game, you're going to need to get a set amount of these. You need six of them, uh, and you have to have the three gold ones. So once that happens, that'll trigger the end of the game, or once two players move into the center. Either way, the players will finish out the current round. Uh, at the end of the game, you're going to accumulate the victory points you have, as well as some bonus victory points for having the, each, uh, the most of each different type of cube and the most money. And whoever has the most victory points through all of that will be the winner. And there you have it, that is Rockwell. Now I may have given myself away at the very beginning when I said that I was excited to get my hands on the game, uh, and I'm still very excited about the game after playing it a couple of times now. Uh, the game is tense, I would say. Uh, now, if you've watched the video, you saw that uh, placing your vice presidents out on the board, there's not a lot of different placement options where you can place a guy. Uh, placing a guy out there, you know, you either place him on board one, board two, or board three, and there's, you know, somewhere between three and five placement areas for your guy on each of those boards, but you can only place on the same board once, uh, and you only have two of your guys to place on, so you're not going to be placing on all three. But, it's really kind of interesting to determine when it's good to place and rearrange turn order and get one of the two benefits available on that board. Uh, a lot of the times you're going to want to do that, and sometimes you're going to want to sell stuff, and sometimes you're going to want to take those actions that are available on the last board, upgrading your guys or upgrading and building an elevator, um, you know, getting some of the victory point tiles. Which ones are important in which rounds, and which ones can you get to in time in order to do them before other players place there? Uh, on top of that, you have the tension of trying to figure out who it's best to cooperate with, uh, if anyone, in order to finish mining out an area. Do you want to give resources to somebody else? Uh, and when you do so, is it okay to let them have the upper hand and get the extra resources? Uh, will there be many extra resources? Or do you want to try and make sure that you're in the lead? Always a good idea. And get the extra resources for yourself. Uh, when do you rush to the center to try and finish off the game? Because if two players enter the center, uh, the game is going to trigger an end. Or uh, do you want to trigger the end by uh, getting all of the different victory point tiles that are available to you and getting the last three that you need in order to trigger the end of the game. Uh, there's all types of options here. Uh, and all of them have to be considered at pretty much every point in the game. Uh, and I think that makes this an excellent game. Uh, I really enjoy it, uh, and I, I had a lot of fun playing. So if you're looking for an interesting Euro-style game that doesn't have uh, a feel like a lot of other games, it's just very interesting to be moving your miners around, controlling those, and at the same time uh, kind of getting bonus bonuses to their actions by utilizing your VPs, plus the whole auction mechanism at the beginning. It's a very uh, eclectic and unique jumble of different mechanics that work really well together. Uh, so if that sounds good to you, I definitely suggest checking this one out. One of my favorites of the year so far, Rockwell from Sit Down Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.